We're talking push trucks, PA Posse, really big right rear wheels, and racing on dirt. From Silver Dollar to Williams Grove, Eldora to Devil's Bowl, and of course, Knoxville. This is Winged Nation, presented by Hercules Tires. Now your hosts, Steve Post and Aaron Evernham. Hello again. It is MRN Wing Nation presented by Hercules Tires. So glad you joined us. Our favorite time of the week, talking sprint car racing. And we have a lot to talk about as we are wrapping up the 56th running of the 5-Hour Energy Knoxville Nationals presented by Casey's General Store. Aaron Evernham, Steve Post here. Later we're going to be joined by race winner Jason Johnson, Brad Doty. Good luck, Brad. You're going to try to wrap your arms around it because we certainly can't. Uh, and a guy, well, that had quite the adventure in Knoxville, Danny Holtgraver. And uh, it doesn't get easier for Danny because he's rolling east this week. So we'll talk to Danny Holtgraver as well. Great, great program. And we are so glad that you joined us. Aaron Everham alongside. And Aaron, uh, I- I'm still trying to process what we saw the four days in Knoxville. What a Knoxville Nationals. It was incredible. You know, I was trying to think before we came on the show, how would I describe it? And to me, it was just emotional yes in a lot of different ways you know that brian's family was there so we had you know a chance to to chat with them and honor brian but then it was the most incredible sprint car race <laughs> i've ever seen i took my one-year-old daughter to Knoxville yeah. the first time i put her in my my car in the hall of fame there was it was just a very emotional week and i mean all sorts of emotions not just one yeah. emotion you know and emotions emotion is an interesting thing because once emotion is stirred it can go from morning to excitement yeah. once you get emotion out you know it's like yeah. some people say there's a very little difference between between uh you know passion and anger you yeah. know it's like it's Absolutely. so because it's like once the emotion is going and we had it you know started with brian clausen's passing and and the mourning and the sadness yep. there but then as everyone got together and got a chance to catch up with folks yep. and we all had our experience experiences where we just rekindle memories yours i just loved following along with you with kate that picture of her in the car i i that that's just you, you're going to cherish that picture forever i am moment. and you're going to make me tear up again i'm sorry I'm <laughs> no sorry. no that's all right when you when you just said that how emotions are all tied together and once you let them out it's really true like you know I, I had the chance to talk to Tim Clausen and his mm-hmm. family very very emotional but then going and seeing my daughter sit in the car that I wanted yeah. uh, an outlaw race in in the Hall of Fame was one of those moments like I couldn't keep my tears in and I'm, I'm not sure. usually that much of a girly girl that cries a lot but man last week I shed a lot of tears it was amazing it really was and when it came to the racing the racing was good all week long yeah I mean it, it ended spectacularly but the racing was good. Uh, Jason's battle with Donnie Schatz, I think. I think ironically, I think. I mean, and Jason. Jason summed up that you know I want to win in this race. There was some other words in there, okay. But Donnie, I think Donnie's quote wrapped it up. I didn't think he could run fifty laps that hard. I know. I, I don't know. I think those two left everything on the table. I think they did, and you could see after the race. Donnie kind of went and swerved at Jason. Yeah. He wasn't too happy with him. But by the time he collected his thoughts and did his interview, yeah. he was very well spoken. And, and like you said, he really said that Jason. Huge respect. Yeah, yes. huge respect. It was, I, like you said, they left everything they could on that racetrack and they put on a heck of a show for us fans. It was amazing. And then just the good stories throughout the race, okay? Um, Kyle Larson, 21st to 5th, nobody noticed. Yeah, through the B main. Through the B main. Greg Hodden at 18th to 8th with a broken shock tower. Yeah. On the left front of the car. I mean, nobody noticed. I don't think I ever took my eyes off the leader. No, though. because that was the thing. You <laughs> yeah. didn't. Uh, even making it, the Jeff Swindell story with the Gil Saunders yes. number 47 car. It's Jeff's first national since 1999. But Saunders been bringing the car to the nationals 50 straight years. That's awesome. And they locked it in on prelim night. That's awesome. I mean, you imagine that. I mean, I think he's 82 years old. Yep. There was a video that uh, Knoxville did, and Knoxville's social media campaign was just spectacular was because it painted all of these pictures. I knew the 47 car had been around forever. I mm-hmm. knew Jeff had been in the race, but I watched that video, and it was from two or about two years ago of Gil talking about bringing cars up there. Yeah. And you just put the context in it. 50 years he's been hauling cars up to the Nationals, and this year on the 50th anniversary, they lock it in on night one? Yeah. So amazing. With Jeff, who said he'd only run a handful yeah, of 410 races. Exactly. How about Logan Schuhart in the B-Main? That was a great Rolling show, yeah. into the B-Main. That B-Main was spectacular. And Logan, at the end of that, just got up on the wheel and says, I'm going to take this fourth spot. Yeah. I'm going to just take it. I, I that mean, was great. So it was so good. You know, then, but you look at the other side of it, and this is where the emotion of it is. 
if you would have told me Joey Saldana, Brian Brown, and, and Stevie Smith, although Stevie did, I don't know that, you know, Stevie's been a little bit off this year. But if you told me John, uh, Joey Saldana, Brian Brown, and Stevie Smith aren't in the Knoxville Nationals, I'd have called you nuts. Uh, yeah, I'm with you. Absolutely. Brian Brown, I think, was probably, oh. and like he put a big post on social media today, I think it was, you know, a huge disappointment. Everyone yeah. expected him to be up there contending for that win. Right, exactly. And he had the last chance race, or the Friday night, the reset, as Hodnett yep. called it, the reset race. Okay, and he's running in a spot. And it's like slow motion. The car spins, and it's like, no, 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 brown, no, brownie, no, no, brown. Oh, no. And then yep. you just, it's just insane. It really is. Um, the Wild, R.J. Johnson, yeah. through the billboards. That was incredible. I mean, I'm so glad to see he walked away from that one. Yeah, absolutely. Is it the, so, only the seventh guy that's gone over the fence? Seventh guy that's gone over the fence. We were sitting there. I was sitting over in the Hall of Fame suites. Uh, Preston Root, one of, just, just one of the coolest guy, greatest guys on the planet. Preston's a former MRN guy that yep. – Knoxville Nationals was his bucket list. So we were over there, and Bob Baker was able to hook us up. And we're like, what the Reds for? And I'm kind of looking around. And <laughs> I don't then you see a car. Then you see the guys, the, the, the safety guys scaling the wall. And I said, my gosh, someone must have went on the wall. And Preston, he nudges me. He says, look at that FVP, man. Yeah. It's FV and half a V. And he took it out. So. I know. I was nervous about our motorhome. It was right back Yeah, there. exactly. Like, so. Uh, yeah, our Hepner Racing products. Our <laughs> yeah. guys, they're out there. I said, oh, my God, I hope you didn't I don't, you know, ding up one of their mules back there or something. So um, really, really cool. And I think that's really Knoxville. And, and we're going to sum up Knoxville. We've got, uh, as I said, we've got uh, Jason Johnson, Brad Doty, and, and Danny Holtgraver um, is an adventurous Knoxville yeah. as well. Uh, Friday night, we're, we're hanging out watching it. And uh, we find out that there's this uh, motor coach on fire. And ended up, I think, three of them got burnt. We'll talk to Danny. It was Danny's motor coach that yeah. burned down. A scary. So, scary, no scary thought. Hurt. I mean, the, the the good news, it happened during the race when there was nobody around. Yeah. You know, I mean, but so we'll talk to Danny about that and see what's going on there. So um, great atmosphere. Uh, the Wing Nation shows fans, mm. I'm telling you what, every night when we look back, bigger crowd than the, the night from yeah. the year before. And on Saturday night, um, to have the chance to spend 30 minutes with Tony Stewart, uh, if, if you're if you're following along with this, you can go back to MRN.com and they're all archived. Just go on you know, show archives and, and the the um, the shows from Knoxville are all YouTube are all um, all archived there. And you can go back. You've got to listen to um, Tony Stewart. You just have to his passion. And and that night also we had the front row, which turned out pretty cool. And we're going to hear a little bit of that from Jason Johnson here in just a little bit. So great atmosphere. And they moved us. So we were next to Chandler Dan's <laughs> uh, former sprint car driver yeah. turned Carney. Okay, and he oh, he had a story for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a story. Saw of, me flipping in yeah, front of him. Yeah, yeah. He had a story, yeah. a picture of his car underneath your car, yeah, which yeah, good times. underneath is not, well, good times for him, not so much <laughs> for you. And they set us up right next to the Iowa Beer Bus. Now that was nice. We have new best friends in the world. Our BFFs at the Iowa Beer Bus, I mean, just from top to bottom, from Wednesday to Saturday night and beyond, to all of the charitable events, the mm -hmm. auctions, the kick-it game, or the kick-it game got, ki got rained out, carding but the event. carding event. Um, just what a spectacular week at Knoxville. And we're going to continue on more of the Knoxville conversation. Let's take a look at our Classic Inc. screen printing and embroidery results page. 56th Annual Knoxville Nationals, Jason Johnson, $150,000. That's not bad. No, not a bad payday. Not a bad payday. Donnie Schatz, Shane Stewart, Darren Pittman, and uh, we mentioned Kyle Larson from 21st Friday. It was FVP night. Rico Abreu won the uh, the reset race. Uh, Speed Sport Challenge, Craig Kinzer locked himself in. Tuesday night was, uh, Thursday night was Toyota night. Tim Kading, great to see Tim yeah, Wilcar. that car. was nice. That really was good nice. to see. And uh, Brant Wednesday night, it was Shane Stewart taking the win as well. Other 410 racing, and there was a significant amount of it, but a lot of it got rained out. Uh, Lernerville, Carl Bowser scored the win. So Turner's iced tea for everybody. Everyone chugged some Turner's. Uh, River City's Raceway, Austin Pierce won. At Williams Grove, it was the edge, Brian Monteith. So the Beer Hill gang had to be happy with that. Saturday at Butler, it was Doug Zimmerman. And at Lincoln, it was J.J. Grasso scoring the win. So there you have it, your Classic Inc. pole position. Um, results page, Classic Inc., screen printing and embroidery. Uh, great shirts, great hats, great hoodies, towels, hats, and a whole lot more. Find out why drivers Brian Brown, Donnie Schatz, Danny Dietrich, Danny Lasoski, Brady Bacon, and others choose Classic Inc. You can find out more at ClassicIncUSA.com. That's www.classicincusa.com. We could talk Knoxville all day long, but let's talk to the race winner. When we return, Jason Johnson joins us. Winged Nation with Steve and Aaron will return right after this on MRN.com. 
Aggressive Hydraulics, where we engineer the cylinders that move your business. We specialize in crafting hydraulic cylinders and components with superior precision and performance, making OEM products stronger and creating more opportunities for distributors and repair facilities. Crafting cylinders that operate on a global basis in a wide variety of industries and applications. Get aggressive with your cylinder challenges. Aggressive Hydraulics. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Keep your windows clean and see clearer with Gunk Glass Cleaner. Right now at O'Reilly Auto Parts, buy one bottle of Gunk Glass Cleaner and get one free. Gunk's high-performance ingredients clean glass and hard surfaces without leaving a film or residue. Gunk Glass Cleaner, buy one, get one free at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Restrictions apply. See store for details. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts. Can all the reactions and latest word from the track immediately following each race weekend on MRN's Motorsports Monday with Woody Kane and Joey Meyer. Johnny Sauter drives the number 21 Chevrolet Silverado. Yeah, I didn't know that uh, necessarily we'd been first race of the year. Log on to MRN.com every Monday at noon Eastern or stream the program from the MRN Media Center on demand. It's MRN Motorsports Monday only on the Motor Racing Network. This is Winged Nation on MRN.com. Now, back to Steve Post and Aaron Evernham. You know, I'm the person that has to believe it to achieve it. So, you know, i got to visualize the race. I visualize the start of the race. I'm visualizing what we're going to do at the halfway point. Um, I'm visualizing where I need to be. And, um, you know, there's no doubt that, you know, the KKR guys are going to be tough. Um, the 15 is going to be tough. The two cars are going to be tough. They've been tough all year. You know, we visualize, you know, trying to be a winner. And uh, our visualization is standing on the center of that podium. And there you have it, Saturday night before the race. And visualize standing on the podium, and he parked it there uh, in the Knoxville Nationals. Jason Johnson joins us on the line. Jason, welcome to the show, and congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Greatly, uh, greatly appreciate it. Well, I'll tell you what, dude. What's your life been like for the past uh, 48 hours or so? It's it's been uh, pretty emotional for sure, you know, just just with the overwhelming uh, phone calls and uh, nice celebrations from everyone, fans and family and supporters. It's, it's been really good. Jason, was there a, a point during the week or, or maybe it happened during the race that you, you just knew, you just felt that confidence like, I- I've got this, this is going to happen tonight? Well, I don't know if we ever felt that confident that we, we had it for sure, um, you know, all week long, I had a fast race car. The guys did a, a excellent job from the time that we showed up, and we showed up prepared this year. Like, our car was built before we ever even went to Peebly, and the motor was sitting in it, and we were 100% prepared. So I had a lot of confidence in the race team, and and just going into it, um, you know, when, you, when you're confident in things and things are going your way, you, you definitely build a lot of confidence, and just... As as the week progressed, it, you know the confidence even built stronger and stronger. And to start in the front row and knew that we stood a good chance, you know, or the opportunity was right in front of us. I wanted to capitalize on that. So uh, Saturday, you know, I put a lot of visualization into it and uh, wanting to make it happen. It's absolutely amazing. But did you visualize the battle you had to have with Donnie Shots to win that race? You know, in some instances, I did. Um, you know, I knew I knew all week long, or I guess really Saturday, you know, was us being on the front row and, and Donnie starting so close to the front. I knew he was going to be a contender. There was no doubt, and I think everybody in the fans knew that. So, you know, just by studying video and watching what Shane did on Wednesday night, um, I knew he was going to be tough, and, as much as I tried to glance up at that scoreboard going down the back straightaway, I mean, the 15 was on the board in no time. And I was like, oh, man, not already. <laughs> so, um, you know, it was just – I was just waiting for him to strike. And sure enough, he got his bolt in the first half of the race. And, you know, at the halfway point, you know, Philip Philip really did a good job of making the right calls and getting the car dialed in. And, and um, you know, he he told me, he says, right here, bud, this is your opportunity because you have to put together the best 25 laps of your life. And uh, I just kept visualizing where I needed to be. Um, 
you know, I had to get Donnie to, to get off the bottom. Donnie is magnificent to race around the bottom in Knoxville. I mean, I watched the highlight video, and what he did on that last lap in turn three and four get, still gives me goosebumps. I can't even believe it. So, um, you know, there's no doubt that we had to beat the best in the business to do it, and especially in his own house, and uh, that makes it even more special. Jason, you mentioned in Victory Lane that Shane Stewart had given you some advice uh, prior to the A-Main. Is there something he said specifically that, that stuck in your mind? You know, I really don't want to give it all too much away, but, yeah, <laughs> Shane, being a good friend, you know, I spent a little bit of time, you know, talking with Shane on Thursday. And, and you know, the one thing about Shane and I is we actually try to boost, e- boost each other up and make each other believe that, you know, we could beat this guy, you know, and that, um, you know, both of us were capable of it for sure. But, you know, one thing, you know, Shane brought some pointers out to me that really stood out of how to drive the racetrack. And, you know, obviously one of them is keeping your momentum up and not scrubbing speed off. And uh, I'm not going to get real specific of how he told me how to do that, <laughs> but, uh, you know, everything he shared was very, very valuable, and it made a lot of sense. And I didn't know if I could do it. When you climb, you know, you could talk about it. That's one thing. But to climb in the race car and actually do what he's saying is a, a lot more difficult, I guess is the way to say it. But, you know, it, it really got me to thinking. And, and, like, when you watch video of Donnie running around Knoxville, what Shane was talking about is so, so true. Brian Brown understands it. He's really good around Knoxville. So just paying attention, listening to Shane, it just gave me a little bit more confidence and a little bit something else that um, pay attention to, to to try and run with these guys. Jason, on Sunday night or Saturday night when we had you on the stage, um, I made some comment about your um, little ASCS team is now on the front row of the Knoxville Nationals, and you were quick to point out, you, you, you not corrected me, but you said we're not so little, and it's, and it's a matter of the partnerships that you have developed, and it's absolutely amazing what you've built, and you're right, it's not little, it's young, but it's not little what you've created. What was that like for those people that believed in you, like Priority Aviation and those people that believed in your dream, what was it like to pay back on that dream for you last night? You know, to me, that, that's the biggest thing in my heart that I feel so good about is, you know, we added it up, and there's 39 companies that we work with that believed in our vision to succeed at Jason Johnson Racing, and it all come true. And that was one of the things that we had to define over the winter to race with the World of Outlaws and to, to compete against the best in the business like Donnie and like Shane. And that was one of the things that Philip identified last fall. And, uh, you know, to go back and work with Willie Kane at FK Shocks after we had differences, um, you know, we, we went back to Vortex Wings this year, you know, that we had so much success with. We, we built relationships along the way. And through our relationships, we had to reach out to the companies that we had the most successful with and said that we could do this, and this is our vision, and this is what we want to do. And, um, you know, everybody brings so much to the race team. I mean, there's given nights where, you know, we could call Willie Kane, and he could provide us, you know, a lot of feedback and a lot of knowledge. And, you know, every day we we speak with Tim Engler, with Engler Machine and Tool, and, you know, he's a very valuable asset to JGR because he's so good with fuel. He understands racing. He drove a race car. And it's just building all those relationships with those smaller companies and with the bigger companies like Priority and Mesilla Valley Transportation, Fisher's Body Shop. It's about sharing that vision that where we want it to be, who we want to become, and to put it all together in one week and make and make the Knoxville Nationals victory a reality. Um, it just says a lot about our organization and the people that really, really believe in us because they had to believe in us for us to accomplish what we had, what we did. Jason, you posted something on Facebook yesterday that caught my attention. You posted, uh, a lot of people have asked you where that drive came from, and you said it came from looking in the mirror after you were injured. How much of, of what happened this past week and this year has been you in, in confidence? You know, I think... You know, I don't know. Like last year when I got hurt, 
obviously I was out of the car for three months and I had to sit on the sideline and and I was always so 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 involved with working on the race car and making sure everything was perfect and and um it, you know at that time I couldn't do that so I had to rely on my guys to keep the team going I had to rely on Philip to to manage and to lead the race team and it and it brought a new perspective as to where I needed to be and I'm not going to deny it over those three months I put on extra pounds and I put on extra weight and when I come back in the car I noticed it and then you know I, I stopped and look at Donnie Schott stepped up his program a couple of years ago and Joey Saldana is a really fit driver I admire Jimmy Johnson he's you know he's a uh, r- remarkable when it comes to fitness Casey Kane's fit so a lot of your elite drivers are really really fit and you know I was looking at you know, Philip and I were discussing last fall of all the ways that we we're going to better the race team. But the one thing that I felt that I could personally bring to the race team was to uh, be happy with who I seen in the mirror. And I didn't see a person that was fit and that was capable of being a, a Knoxville national champion or becoming a world of outlaw champion someday. So I wanted to, I wanted to better myself. I want to step up my own program and my own self. So, I took it upon myself to take up health health and fitness and and with a lot of support from Jennifer Marshall at Priority Aviation, uh, you know, I got a lot of training, I got a lot of knowledge and uh it, it's paid off and I just feel really a lot better about myself personally. You used every bit of that fitness in those final 25 laps, my man. I'm telling you what, because you guys left nothing on the table. Jason, final question for you. When it all ended and you got done with all the hoopla, I know you went to the concert, I know you hung out, and I'm sure you partied a little bit. When you got back to the motor coach or wherever you went, you and Bobby, and, and what was the crash like? I mean, how wore out were you when it was all done but how excited were you when it was all over? That 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 first quiet moment you had after this incredible night. Just, just remarkable. I mean, just it's it's hard to describe it. It really is. I mean, just um, you know, you, you want to lay in bed. It's, I think eight thirty in the morning. I was ready to go to bed. I thought I was tired. You lay in bed and you can't even fall asleep. Yeah. I mean, just the enthusiasm. Um, today with social media and cell phones and smartphones the phone's going ballistic throughout the night my wife's bobby's phone's going ballistic um jack's had no trouble falling asleep he was sprawled (laughs) out right in the middle of the bed and um we all just kind of laid there and hugged each other and loved each other and thank god for all the blessings we definitely know we have you know angels looking upon us with brian clausen and Mm -hmm. and um you know everything that went on throughout the week the way it all played out and uh really thanking our blessings. Jason, that's a beautiful story, and it was a beautiful week, and we're just glad we got a chance to ride along with you, and we appreciate you taking some time today and sharing it with us here on Wing Nation. Continued success. It all starts again tonight. No time, <laughs> Not much time off, but uh, continued success, and I know we'll talk with you down the road, but thanks for joining us. All right. Thank you, guys. Always an honor to be on the show. That is Jason Johnson, the winner of the 56th annual Knoxville Nationals, and wow. Um, folks, that's commitment Yeah, right there. That's wanting to win. That was an incredible interview. A lot of guys was. talk about wanting to win, and a lot of people have a lot of theories about winning. Um, but when he talked about his partners, his fitness, the effort, the energy, the, um, the faith, everything. The, faith yeah. the passion, uh, that's what it takes to win. And then getting up on that wheel. And, man, when you're racing Donnie Shots at Knoxville, you <laughs> better get up on that wheel. And Jason Johnson did on Saturday night. We need to step away because when we come back, Sprint Car Hall of Famer Brad Doty, he joins us next. Hey, this is Donnie Schatz, and you're listening to Kendra and Steve on Wing Nation here on MotorRacingNetwork.com. Classic Inc. USA Screen Printing and Embroidery is constantly testing the limits of custom racewear and specialized embroidery. Headquartered in western Pennsylvania, Classic Inc. holds the highest standard, maximizing your return as well as the ultimate customer satisfaction. From track swag fan wear to quick crew crew wear, Classic Inc. has you covered. Their dedicated staff and designers will keep your race team and fans looking sharp. Contact Classic Inc. today and get your team ahead of the competition. www.classicincusa.com That's Classic Inc. at the track and on your back. 
the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum in Knoxville, Iowa. Honoring Sprint Car Racing's greatest achievers. 25 historic Sprint Cars on display. A movie theater featuring Sprint Car Racing films. And a breathtaking view of historic Knoxville Raceway. Go to SprintCarStuff.com for the largest Sprint Car gift shop on the planet. The National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum in Knoxville, Iowa. Whatever you drive, wherever you go, Hercules Tires will get you there. Whether you're running on dirt or running a job. Our dependable, high-quality tires are the perfect fit for your needs. For unmatched value, selection, and warranty with industry-leading road hazard protection, there's only one choice, Hercules Tires. To learn more, visit HerculesTire.com or call 800-677-9535. Hercules Tires, right on our strength. Time now for a look at a great American dirt track presented by another great American dirt track, the Speed Palace, Port Royal Speedway. I'm Ashley Stremme. It's known as the home of the All-Stars. Having hosted nearly 100 Articat All-Star Circuit of Champions events, also known as the track that action built, Fremont Speedway, located at the Sandusky County Fairgrounds in Fremont, Ohio, held its first automobile race in 1936 on the half-mile horse track. 7,000 people attended that first race, but it would be 12 years before Fremont hosted another auto race. When the current Fremont Speedway was founded in 1951, it started life as a one-tenth mile flat dirt track. In its current configuration as a one-third mile clay oval, Fremont has hosted the World of Outlaws and other national and regional touring series and is the finale of the Ohio Sprint Speed Week. Fremont hosts weekly 410 and 305 sprint car racing, as well as dirt trucks and late model racing. The Ohio traveler Rick Ferkel began his racing career at Fremont with a victory. Fremont was also the first dirt track in the nation to incorporate soft walls. Fremont Speedway, a great American dirt track brought to you by another great American dirt track, the Speed Palace, Port Royal Speedway. Thank you, Ashley, and if you would care to share with us, your Fremont memories later on today, Tuesday, uh, we will have a spot on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash wing nation. And we would love to see your favorite memories. So people have posted videos over the course of time. I love seeing old videos and Fremont Speedway, the track that action built one of the great ones up in Northwestern Ohio. Uh, let's continue the Ohio theme here along the way. Joining us is a member of the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame. And of course, Sprint Card Midget Magazine. You can catch his work there. Our friend Brad Doty. Hey, Brad, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me on. Brad, uh, Aaron and I are sitting here wrestling, trying to put our arms around the Knoxville Nationals. Uh, we said, well, we know who can just succinct this up and tie it right into a good bow. We know Doty can do it. What do you, make, it make, make it make sense for us. Wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, racing is, as you know, Aaron and, and Steve, it, it, it's an emotional highs and lows on any given day, but man, just this past week, the, the ups and downs and the emotions and, and the storylines and just everything, it was just an incredible week. There's no doubt about it. It's one that I'll probably never, ever forget from, you know, like I said, just the emotions to the, the one of the best Knoxville Nationals that I can ever remember, and and uh, man, what a week. Brad, what, what makes this for you, one of the best Knoxville Nationals you've ever attended, because, not to be mean, but you've attended a few. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was mean, Aaron. Sorry. Wow. Sorry. Wow. That was a compliment. You know, you've had the chance, the opportunity to go to a lot. Oh, she's backing yeah. up here. She's backing <laughs> you know, up. <laughs> trying to dig we out the hole. Sh- short memories. I mean, there, were, there was, you know, the time Bobby Allen won was obviously a big hit, and, and there's been, you know, good races in the past, and, and and you look back and you read some of the history where you know, Jan Opperman, Dick Gaines passed Jan Opperman out of turn four. And, you know, I never witnessed that myself. But just to see the, the racing that went on and, and um, the changes that Kendra made at Knoxville, um, Kendra Jacobs made there, and, and um, just, I don't know, just the whole atmosphere, with the whole vibe all week was good. I mean, fighting the weather, um they got the got the show in, and the rain hit on one of the nights. You know, they hurried up and got it in, and and then it rained overnight. What's well, Thursday night? So everything just worked out. Um, you know, for, and the, and for the Cup guys to have the weekend off and have so many of those guys there hanging out all week to be part of it, and uh, obviously that just builds the show and 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 makes it even bigger for the fans. And 
um, you know, just from from the the concert to vendor road, just the kids zone, everything. Just uh, yeah. it was just a big week. And like I said, you know, if if Donnie would have got out front and led every lap and won it, would would people, even myself, feel that the same way? It would have been a good week. I'm not sure it would have been, and nothing against Donnie Shaw. Um, but, you know, to see Jason win it and the way he did it with the racing that he did was just incredible. Brad, you've been in the race cars. Aaron, of course, has been in a race car. Um, the The pace that they raced at for the extended period of time, face it, those last 25 laps, I am telling you what, two guys, I mean, they put it all on the table. Have you, it's rare we get to see two guys, they're so good at what they do, just give us, show us what it's like when they gave every ounce of energy, every ounce of themselves in that one. Well, that's, that just goes to show what the Knoxville Nationals mean to to the drivers. And, you know, I heard Jason, you know, talking about, and you guys talking about his injury. What a lot of people don't know, and, and, and I got the okay from Jason to mention this, but when, in his accident, he was actually paralyzed for about 10 to 12 hours or at least overnight after that accident. And obviously that would put the fear in anyone. So, you know, for him to come back from an injury like that to where, you know, he may have been paralyzed for life to come back and win the Knoxville Nationals, that's just, I mean, it's no wonder he's emotional or or appreciates the win that much more. But on the other hand, having gone through that, none of that mattered to him. That was all out of his mind when he was racing Donnie Shots as hard as he did for the Knoxville Nationals. And and you you heard a couple of his quotes, you know, and especially the one in the media center at the end of the night, you know. And, and uh, you know, just basically it, it was the Knoxville Nationals, dude. And, you know, I was going to do what it took to, to win that race. And, you know, John, Donnie got, was a little upset at the end. And Donnie Schatz is probably the cleanest sprint car driver in history to have the success that he has had, especially. He never leans on people. I just say never, but it's very seldom that he squeezes people or leans on people. And I got to thinking that, you know, that might be one of the reasons he was so kind of upset. That plus, you know, he just lost the Knoxville Nationals. Um, I watched the intense talk that they had, but when it was all said and done, they smiled and shook hands. They both realized the adrenaline was pumping and, and, you know, they, he was upset at the moment, but he realized Jason ran him hard and, and, and squeezed him a few times, but nothing, you know, no blatant spinning anybody out or anything like that. So uh, Jason Johnson didn't do anything that I wouldn't have done to try to win the Knoxville Nationals, I can tell you that. Brad, going into this Nationals, would you have put Jason Johnson even in your list of, uh, of top ten? And with that being said, what do you think this does to Jason's career? Well, to answer your first question, probably not. And uh, nothing against him. It's just, you know, you look at, you got when you go to the Knoxville Nationals, at least I do, you look at the history of the guys that, that are consistently fast there. And those are the guys, obviously, that you put at the top of the list. Jason's had some good runs there, but, you know, I wouldn't say he would have been at the top of the list to, to win this thing. So, you know, um, it, it, that's part of what made, made the week so great, you know, it, and what makes Knoxville so great, uh, you know, what it wasn't expected. And obviously what this will do, um, you know, for his career, I mean, very few people, would you say, Steve, I think it's the 24th yeah. different winner. And, uh, oh, by the way, Steve, your, your speech at the driver's meeting and your quotes and stuff, I'm telling you, you had the hair on the back of my neck standing up. You gave me goosebumps. Thank you. And, and for the crowd and the fans to be there, and the drivers to listen to you speak, it, to me, really drove it home on just how big this event is and what it means. I'm telling you, it was, it was awesome. So, you know, I wanted, wanted to make sure you knew that. But, you. Uh, you know, back to Jason, you know, especially, you'll have to, I mean, Tim Schaefer won it in 2010. He hasn't had a lot of success there since. So I'm sure that's heartbreaking to him, but you know, his name's still on that list, and Jason Johnson's name is always going to be on the list as well. 
Brad, with sprint car racing, uh, you know, the, the, then we know the Knoxville Nationals is the key, but we also know that tonight they're going back at it again, okay? <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to ask you about contrasting drivers here, okay? Jason Johnson, how does he roll into McCool Junction today and not have a hangover from the party? <laughs> and I'm going to go the other extreme, and I saw some posts this morning from Brian Brown. How does he go to McCool mm-hmm. Junction and try to salvage something out, which is was a disaster, and in his words, just just a terrible, terrible week. Both those drivers, how do they how do they move forward? You just it's you have to block it out, and and mm-hmm. you will. I mean, once you strap into that race car, especially at a main time, that you know you that's the great thing about racing that much. I mean, it gives you a chance to finally get it off off your mind because I'm sure it's been on Brian's Brian Brown's mind. <sighs> You know, ever since, you know, Donnie shot, I guess, won or ran second in the late model Sunday night. So he was back at it <laughs> the next night, you know. But that's that's the best cure for that hangover is to get back in the race car and, uh, you know, get the adrenaline pumping and forget about, uh, you know, what happened at the last race. And, and Jason has the same thing, you know, the adrenaline and, and the rush that he felt and, and probably still feeling from winning. That's after tonight, that's history. You know he's got to he's got to perform again tonight, and uh, you know even at the level when he owns his own team, which is nice because you know he, he good chance he's not going to get fired. But you know he's got a lot, he depends on a lot of sponsorships, so he has to continue. And I'm you know I'm sure he feels the pressure. He's got to continue to perform on the racetrack to maybe keep some of those sponsors and keep his team going. So um, as of as of tonight, you know the, the last Saturday will be be history. Mm. Mm-mm. It's sad and it's good, both. Depends on where you're at, at it, you know what I mean? And that's kind of kind of yeah. the beauty of it. You're right. It's just with racing so much. Uh, the good news is the next race is in three days. The bad news is the next race is in three days. And so <laughs> exactly. depends exactly. on your perspective. Brad, uh, always a pleasure to hang out with you and get a chance to chat out in Knoxville and uh, for you to join us here on the program. Thanks so much for the kind words and, and, and post. I sincerely appreciate that. Appreciate the friendship and appreciate your time today on Wing Nation. Thanks so much for joining us. Well, thanks for having me on. It kind of it sums it all up, or, or you know, it, it's kind of a letdown after the Knoxville Nationals, and I was excited to be invited to be on the show today to kind of extend the, the Nationals a little bit for me, too. So thank you for having me on. <laughs> exactly. That is Brad Doty, National Sprint Car Hall of Famer, and absolutely amazing, and, and I, I, I like his assessment because really Brian Brown and Jason Johnson have to do the same thing tonight. Yeah. You well, know, it's from different perspective, but they have to do the same thing yeah. tonight. And like we always say in sprint car racing, any form of racing, you're only good as your as your last race. Yeah. So even for Jason, who's Boy, coming off this awesome, for him. yeah, Man. <laughs> but it's great for Brian Brown. He gets a chance to redeem himself. Oh my gosh, amazing, amazing! I had a chance, as you did, as all of us do, to hang out at the Sprint Car Hall of Fame, and and I, I, you know, just and I've never watched. I'll tell you about. I've always heard about the view from the suites over yeah. there. Well, Bob Baker said, well, why don't you come try the view from the suites? And I did. I don't know that I'll ever watch a race at Knoxville from anywhere else. It is <laughs> the best seat amazing. in the house. The only thing you're missing, well, if you're on the second floor, is the noise. But the other, Oh, yeah, on the upper floors. Yeah, I was outside. They, I was okay, outside. There you go, yeah, there you go. I was, I mean, it just, it is, ever, I, I describe it all year long as this most magical place in the world. And you go there and you realize that most magical place in the world doesn't do justice to what the Sprint Car Hall of no. Fame is. It is an absolutely must-see. And they're located right in turn number two in Knoxville. We always talk about birthdays. Sunday's birthday, Ron Shaver and Brian Monteith. Uh, tomorrow will be Granville, Hank Henry, and Tommy Estes Jr. Friday, Steve Stapp and Mike Peters. Today would have been the birthday of Hal Robson. And a lot of times on here we talk about people we all know. In fact, last week I think we uh, you know, we talked about um, Jack, Elam. Jack Elam. So uh, who we all know today. Yep. Um, Hal Robson, born in Ontario, moved to California when he was a kid. He started racing in 1930. At 19 years old, he had to get his mom's permission. At 19 years old. Now, he got kids at eight racing now and 14 the racing sprint cars. But at 19, <laughs> he had to get mom's permission. After three years of the um, three years of the roadsters out there, and uh, he moved to sprint cars at Ascot. And it's estimated he had 50 wins between 1936 and 1939. Moved east after the war, competed with the Triple A Series in Indianapolis. Had a big crash at Salem in 1947. Didn't even think he was going to survive. He survived, kept racing, kept running. And finally, in 1995, he retired from racing. He was only five foot four tall, 
and 145 pounds. Wow. At 80 years old, he went to the doctor, <laughs> and the doctor said, Hal, are there any bones in your body that you have not broken? And Hal replied, probably not. <laughs> Wow, what a career. He died at the age of 84 in California. Hal Robson, the reason we have the Sprint Car Hall of Fame, a story that I never knew, read about as I was putting notes together on this show, and just can't wait to go back there and see the plaque and see a picture of Hal and just see what that is because it's another one of the great stories contained in the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum. And by the way, the largest inventory of Sprint Car-related merchandise in the world, although they might be a little depleted today. (laughs) uh, I purchased a few things. Yes, exactly. SprintCarHOF.com. That's SprintCarHOF.com. And yes, it is a great registry for weddings and bridal showers (laughs) and gifts for babies, too. Yes. And they had big news today. They started the Expand the Dream. They actually started the building. Construction started this morning. Great, Mm -hmm. great man. I'm telling you what, that place, wow. I just, one of these, one of these times, I go out there during nationals and I love the place, but one of these, one of these years, I'm going to just fly out there on a Tuesday afternoon or something and just go in and just really poke poke around because it is a, it is a beautiful, beautiful place. Hey, we need to step away. When we come back, uh, we're going to talk a little Knoxville, but we're going to start spinning forward because the racing world moves on. Danny. Holtgraver joins us next. I'm Shane Stewart, and you're listening to Wing Nation on MotorRacingNetwork.com. Hi, I'm Jeff Gordon. Did you know that 43 children are diagnosed with cancer each and every day? That more children die from cancer than any other disease? Athletes of all ages are dedicating their stats to change these stats, and you can too. Visit JeffGordonChildrensFoundation.org to become a Kick It champion. No matter what sport, you can use your points, laps, or goals to change the odds for kids with cancer. Make your stats really count. Become a Kick It champion. Plan now for the 38th annual Atco Jackson Nationals. Three big days, September 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. Come out and see the stars of the Lucas Oil ASCS 360 Sprint Car Series. The National Sprint League 410 Sprint Cars. And the HRA Non-Wing Sprint Cars. Watch Danny Lasowski, Brian Brown, Sammy Swindell, Ian Matson, Aaron Reitzel, Johnny Herrera, and many more of the nation's best sprint car drivers. Compete for $25,000 to win the NSL 410s and $10,000 to win the ASCS 360. Get a three-day combo pass for just $75. Order your reserve tickets online at Jackson. JacksonMotorplex.com. The all-new Jackson Motorplex in Jackson, Minnesota. Just be there. It's all over at Martinsville, Virginia. Richard Petty has pulled it off. Rollback Thursday. Classic MRN race broadcast on MRN.com. Waltrip will win the track race to turn three. Earnhardt gets him. Hard into the wall goes Waltrip. Hard goes Earnhardt. Everybody else spins either way. Out of the number four corner, down to the line. Neil Bonnet is going to win. The Northwestern Bank 400. He'll beat Waltrip a two-car length. What a finish here at North Wilkesboro. Rollback Thursday. Thursdays at 1 Eastern on MRN.com. This is Tony Stewart. You're listening to Winged Nation on MotorRacingNetwork.com. Thank you, Smoke. Welcome back, everyone. It is MRN Wing Nation presented by Hercules Tire. Let's go back to the Hercules Tire hotline. Joining us now is uh, Danny Holtgraver. Hello, Danny. Welcome back to the show. Uh, thanks for having me on. Well, Danny, let's get the bat out of the way, okay? Um, Friday night, you're racing, okay? Knoxville Nationals trying to race your way, scrap and claw your way into the A-Main. And we heard word, and I don't know where you were at when this was all going on, probably on the racetrack, that there was a motor coach burning. And come to find out it was yours. So first off, what happened? Is everyone all right? What's the what? What's the story with that? Yeah, uh, fortunately, no one was injured. Um, motorhome, I'm not sure what happened, but it, it burnt down to the ground pretty much. It's my dad's motorhome. So, uh, you know, it's pretty unfortunate, but uh, just got to thank God everybody was safe. Yeah. Um, there was a, a lady, I'm not sure her name. She was walking by and, and spotted it, uh, you know, got some guys on the case and they, they tried putting it out and it just, it went up too fast from the sounds of it. But, uh, you know, I just got to thank everybody for, you know, the support after that. It was unbelievable. The people that reached out to us to offer us whatever we needed. And, um, you know, I really, I really can't thank everybody enough for, for all the support and, you know, all the help that they offered. Dan, you had a, a little bit of a tough week on track as well. Tell us about your, your Knoxville Nationals. Um, it started out great, actually. We rolled out Wednesday night and was fifth quick. And, you know, you need to be at least in the top ten of qualifying just to, you know, have a, a decent shot at locking yourself in. Um, qualified great. Heat race, missed it by one spot. That kind of, you know, 
changed the whole tune right there. A B main at the nationals is an outlaw show. So it was, you know, really tough from there. Just struggled from there. Uh, you know, Cody Jacobs gave me a great car all weekend. We had speed every time we hit the racetrack. I think I, it was a matter of needing some more laps at the place. I haven't raced there too much, but, um, you know, it kind of, kind of struggled after that and we were fast every time we hit the track just a matter of putting it all together and didn't capitalize on the speed as much as we needed to you know danny that's a theme of drivers and you know uh danny dietrich was on our show one night out there and he talked about it the challenge is is running with the all-star circuit of champions as you do and so much racing in ohio and dietrich talked the same thing about pennsylvania but needing laps at Knoxville, is it is it something you've pondered how you accomplish that as, as 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 we move forward down the road, how you can maybe sneak out there or something, or is it just out of the realm of possibility? Um, you know, if you can find an open weekend and you have the resources to go out there and do it, it's about a, you know, a 12 hour trip for me yeah. uh, from the shop. It's about nine hours, but just finding an open weekend, it's really tough to do that. You know, we're, the all-star schedule is pretty busy and, um, you know, we, we race, uh, we're racing all year, so yeah. it makes it tough to get out there, but, um, you know, that's why we, we tried to head out there. We raced on Sunday for the Capitani and tried to get some laps there and just, uh, you know, learn whatever we could. And we definitely learned a lot. And, you know, I, the one thing I needed to work on after Sunday was qualifying and we fixed that problem. Mm. So, you know, I definitely learned there, but it's just a, it's a really tough place to race at and, it's not even that. It's just a really easy place to make mistakes at. So that was more my issue. Um, you know, you got guys like Brian Brown and, and Sammy and all those guys who race there all the time and have a million laps there. Just it makes it tough. But, you know, we've, I learned a lot this year, and we'll, we'll go back next year and try again. Danny, now that you have the Nationals in the rearview mirror, how much are you excited to get to Pennsylvania and get back with your normal group of guys you race against? Well, you'll have some extra co- yeah, competition there, in Pennsylvania. Yeah. <laughs> but how excited are you to just get back on the road and, and get back to what you know? Uh, we're excited. Um, you know, be good to get back out and run some all-star shows here. We're, we're winding down pretty quick. But, yeah, you know, I've never raced a Grandview or Lebanon Valley, so that'll be two new tracks this weekend. I've always been decent at, Port, or at uh, Williams Grove and, Lincoln, I've been up and down, but I'm excited to get back to both of those places. So I think it'll be a good weekend for us. When you look at this, it's like, does the fatigue, I'm sitting back, I'm tired thinking about what we just did. And then all of a sudden it hits me that they're running, you guys are running four straight nights. Is it, is, is, you know, I mean, how's everyone doing? Is everyone holding up all right? Yeah. I mean, you have to. Yeah, uh, I know. Point, we're, we're this far into it. You know, you just kind of win, lose, or draw. You just keep rolling along. And, um, you know, we had some bad luck the end of the week at Knoxville. And, you know, Cody's pretty busy right now getting things ready. But, um, you know, it's part of the deal. You want to race, you got to do what it takes. And I've got good guys around me. And, uh, you know, just we'll be ready to go. Danny, you've, you're fifth in points with the All-Stars. You've had some wins. How would you assess the year so far? Uh, it started off a little shaky. We just we had some some engine issues and just uh, you know mechanical issues, but we've got everything straightened out in that sense. I think for the most part, um, you know, I, I've had a lot of speed all year. Uh, there's places where I've needed to improve, and you know, nights where we've missed it with the race car some, but th- that's part of it also. Um, I, really, it's, it's been a pretty good year uh, for the most. You know, we've, we've got, I don't know how many top tens and top fives and, you know, podiums. You'd like to have more wins, but if we can just keep putting ourselves in position to uh, to run up front, then, you know, the wins can, they'll, they'll come. And we have enough races left that we can, I feel like we can win a few more. So we'll just keep, keep moving along. And it all starts this week, Thursday night, Grandview, Friday night, Williams Grove, Saturday, Lincoln Speedway, and Sunday at Lebanon Valley. Uh, Danny, we're glad. Uh, we, we hate that we had to start the interview with all of the Knoxville uh, shenanigans going on out there, but we're glad you guys are going to rebound and have a good weekend, and we wish you the best this weekend and on throughout the season. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, I uh, really appreciate you having me on, and once again, I just need to thank everybody. I mean, just every, every person that called, texted, came over everything that, that offered their help to us at uh, Knoxville after Friday. So just thanks again. It's it's amazing to see the race and family come together, you know, times like that. So just uh, feels pretty special. Special indeed. That's Danny Holtgraver joining us. And, uh, again, 
It's been there's been a lot of themes over the last week, but the sprint car family, um, you know, the outpouring on Brian Clawson's family, and then all of a sudden we've got another problem yeah. with Danny's, and yet listen to him talk about how just people that you know maybe were thought they were tapped out found another gear yeah to 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 reach out to Danny, and I just think it's just a wonderful wonderful thing the sprint car family. We need to step away. Uh, more MRN Wing Nation in just a moment. Wing to Nation with Steve and Aaron will return in just a moment on MRN.com. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Has the summer heat taken a toll on your vehicle's battery? Count on O'Reilly Auto Parts for the Super Start battery that's right for your vehicle. For a limited time, purchase a Super Start Premium, Extreme, or Platinum battery and get up to a $15 O'Reilly gift card by mail. O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply. See store for details. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. The 25th year of the Lucas Oil American Sprint Car Series is about to begin. Expanded national and regional tours, over 150 events across the United States, and some of Sprint Car Racing's biggest names and rising stars. The 25th anniversary of the Lucas Oil ASCS is one you don't want to miss. Find out when the American Sprint Car Series is near you in 2016 at ASCSRacing.com. Find us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and get all the action away from the track live at RacingBoys.com. Live sports are the one true reality entertainment where a single dramatic moment can become timeless. In NASCAR, Motor Racing Network's live broadcast elevates your senses to the sights, sounds, and struggles taking place on the racetrack. Keselowski to the bottom of the racetrack. He tries to slide up. Newman is there. Sideways is Keselowski. The power of radio to the imagination of the listener. Tune in to the Motor Racing Network. Visit MRN.com for an affiliate list in your local area. This is Winged Nation on MRN.com. Now, back to Steve Post and Aaron Evernham. We are having a ball, and we are glad you joined us here on MRN Wing Nation, presented by Hercules Tire. Time to talk about the Jeff Gordon Kick It Person of the Week, and that is everybody and anybody who participated in the um, sly, uh, the Weld Racing Go-Kart Spectacular. And then the uh, Tony Stewart Kick It Cup got rained out, but the auction was hot and heavy yes. in Dyer Hudson Hall, and they raised a fair amount of money for the uh, Jeff Gordon's uh, Kick It. Uh, so everybody that participated... I was part of our person of the week, and Aaron, you got to uh, <laughs> climb back behind the wheel at the uh, karting spectacular. Yes, one uh, participant didn't show up, so they saw me and threw me a T-shirt, said hop in, and I was quite excited about it, but they gave me a lemon. Oh, Tell yeah, you. there we go. Tell so, you. driver complaining about <sighs> the car. Well, I mean, it was it was pretty noticeable. So, Jeff Gordon gets on the outside of me, and all I want to do is get to his rear bumper. Like, yeah. he's, he's going by me, and I'm like, I'm just going to aim straight for the center of the corner, and I'm going to hit him somehow. Sure enough, he had enough motor to just power on by. All I want to do is, like, get him a little sideways. You Ruffle know? his feathers a yeah, little bit, yeah. Come on. Yeah. So, but it was great, fun, though. It was fun. great to be a great part fun. of it. The crowd was huge. The huge crowd. Biggest crowd we've seen at that event. Yeah. It was amazing. And, and they moved it back to Thursday, and that probably helped because more people are yep. in town. Uh, but the event is just growing also. It and is. because because you have you have Jeff, you have Tony, you have Kyle, you have Casey out there, and it's just fun. And the best part is those four drivers are having a blast. Yeah, they, they broke out the super soakers. Yeah, and they have huge smiles on their face. I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's a and very laid back. And they powdered back. the racetrack down. Kyle yeah. Larson, track prep. I mean, he put Tony Stewart at Eldora to shame. You know, yeah. I mean, he well, was doing just like he did at the truck race at Eldora. He was trying to knock down the fence. Every, oh yeah, <laughs> every it was great, lap. great fun. All part of it. So everybody that participated all weekend long in Knoxville with Jeff Gordon's Kick It, we're honoring you as our Kick It person of the week again. Pediatric cancer, something that is not fun to talk about. Something that touches a lot of lives. And if you or you know somebody who's dealing with it, go to the Jeff Gordon Foundation and find out more information. There's a lot of resources there. They do a lot of work and research, but there's a lot of resources there that can help those that are dealing with just this terrible, terrible disease. When we look forward, um, well, there's two races tonight. The World of Outlaws are at Junction Motor Speedway, McCool Junction, Nebraska. And then also URC is at Bridgeport tonight. So how about that? Yeah. So everyone will get right back at it again. Um, we mentioned this with Danny Holt Graver, the Articat All Star Circuit of Champions. A big, big night Thursday at Grand, or big, big weekend Thursday at Grandview, Friday at Williams Grove, Saturday at Lincoln, and Sunday at Lebanon Valley. IRA bumper to bumper sprints. That's fair week. 
up there in Wilmot. Yep. So the big fair race, two nights of that, there's extra money on the line Saturday night. So that's at Wilmot. And I love what happened here, and I yeah. don't know what happened between Badlands and the World of Outlaws, but they're not on the same page. And it was supposed to be, and it's the Badlands still has the Rock and Roll Gold Cup going on this weekend, but it's no longer sanctioned yep. by the World of Outlaws. That came out about two weeks ago. Uh, World of Outlaws have worked with the IRA, the Bumper to Bumper IRA Sprints, and on Sunday night they're going to the famed Angel That's Park cool. in Very Sun cool. Prairie. So that is going to be huge for the IRA and huge for the World of Outlaws. Um, and um, on the program, uh, Scotty Thiel is going to join us on Wing Nation Weekend, presented by Hefner Racing Products, to preview that for us. But I just, uh, I, I, you know, hate that we have these situations that cause things to be canceled and put away. Don't know all the details there, but there just seems to be some problems. But uh, I'm glad that they rebounded and found a really cool substitute race that's going to be really neat. Yeah, Angel Park has such a rich history, mostly midget racing, but yeah. to have the Outlaws and IRA there is going to be going a to be spectacular fun. show. It's going to be fun, and the Badger Midgets are there on, on the card as well, yep. so it is going to be a full, full night Sunday night. Lucas Oil ASCS National Tour, presented by MAV TV, Motorsports Television, Saturday night, St. Francis County Raceway in Farmington, Missouri. Did you ever race there at all or not? Uh, no. That's, a, that's an interesting spot. I'm really curious about this, because they run weekly 410 racing right there in Missouri, Seem to have their own deal, just seem to be able to plug along and roll along really well. Sort of, sort of reminds me a little bit um, similar to Butler up in Michigan, yeah. where it's like there's this in the middle. I mean, we understand in Pennsylvania, but there's this little niche, St. Francis County. But uh, and we know in Missouri, there's a lot of 360s. Yep. So they're going to pack them in on Saturday night at St. Francis County in Farmington, and on Sunday, the Missouri State Fairgrounds and Sedalia, uh, Sedalia the High Roller Classic, fifteen thousand dollars. It seems like every week we're talking about the Lucas Oil guys. Last week they were Badlands. Racing yeah. for or two weeks ago, they were at Badlands for ten grand. Some big money on the line. Last week it was the Nationals, the three hundred and sixty Nationals for fifteen. Now here we go, another fifteen grand. So good to see our three hundred and sixty friends getting some big money races along the way. Weekly four hundred and ten racing Attica, the Fast Series is back in action. Badlands, Jackson, Ohio County Speedway, Lernerville, River City, Silver Dollar Speedway. Sunday Atomic or Saturday Atomic Badlands Butler. Mercer, Port Royal, Wayne County, Sunday. It is the Rock and Roll Gold Cup at Badlands. A lot of money on the line yeah. there. So, Dob Meyer and those guys are going to be racing for a lot of money. And, oh, yeah, because, well, the, the central Pennsylvania folks don't get enough of it. It is the Justin Snyder salute to the troops at Susquehanna Speedway. So, even with, with Grandview, uh, if, if the posse decides to go to Lebanon Valley or they can even stay home and race for yeah. a fourth straight night. And yeah. then, like, next Tuesday they have, like, New Egypt or something. <laughs> So it's like we're sitting here in August. Everyone's got their tongues hanging out, and the posse's got five races in six nights. It's nuts. It's absolutely crazy. Uh, Dietrich posted this morning about this week we're going to run Grandview, Williams Grove, Lincoln, and uh, Susquehanna. We're not going to New Egypt. I'm like, why not? Yeah, what are you, only four already... nights. <laughs> I mean, just coming off the Knoxville Nationals, Dietrich. Let's get out there and get going, you know. But, I mean, <laughs> it is crazy. We, we have this post-Knoxville hangover and, you know, a little hair of the dog. Well, there's a lot of hair of the yeah. dog in Pennsylvania because there's a lot of racing going on. Hey, want to mention this because we're getting closer and closer to this. And this is going to be kind of the next big one on the schedule. 38th annual Agco Jackson National, September 2nd through the 4th. Le Friday night is Lucas Oil ASCS prelim night plus uh, an HRA non-wing sprints. So what they're doing is Friday night, 360, the Lucas Oil ASCS tour prelim yep. night. Saturday night, National Sprint League prelim night. And then on Sunday what they're doing – they're putting them all out there, and they're going to run a National Sprint League race, 25000 to win. Wow. Uh, here we go again, Lucas Oil ASCS, $10,000 to win for the ASCS. Great. That Sunday night show is going – you want to talk about every great driver in the Midwest is going to be there for that thing. Trying to run both races. Both races, yeah. exactly. Uh, Jackson Nationals, and I know Todd Quaring's goal is to build this back up. Uh, this is how you do it. Yeah. Yeah, you start. this is how you start doing it, and uh, really amazing what's going on there. So that is going to be a whole lot of fun. MRN Wing Nation, presented by Sage Fruit on Mav TV Saturday. Kenny Jacobs joins us. So going to be fun to talk to Kenny about Knoxville and the family and everything else. And as we mentioned, Wing Nation Weekend, presented by Hefner Racing Products, Scotty Thiel going to join us to preview the IRA triple header at Wilmont and Angel Park. Want to mention this also, if you're in York, Nebraska, get out to Penner's Tire Pro because Greg Wilson is there because he's got nothing else to do. <laughs> because, he, I mean, the, the, our racers, our racers, what they do is amazing. He is out at Penner Tire Pros. It's a Hercules Tire spot visit all afternoon until 2 o'clock there. So go out and say hi to Greg Wilson. Tell him we sent him, tent you, and uh, just tell him, hey, you want to meet somebody that's really, really cool, Greg Wilson 
a great, great guy. Thanks to Jason Johnson, to Brad Doty, and to Danny Holtgraver for joining us. As always, thanks to Aaron for riding along here as we talk sprint car racing. But more important than all of that, thank you for joining us here this week. You've been listening to the nation's premier winged sprint car radio program, Winged Nation. Tune in next Tuesday at noon for more talk from the dirt tracks. Winged Nation is also available on demand in the MRN.com Media Center or download from iTunes or Stitcher. Winged Nation is a production of the Motor Racing Network. All rights reserved.